Hello everyone, welcome back to a Nigerian view. So guys, as you can see from this title of the video, I am tired of the Nigerian police force. So about four days ago, a Nigerian police officer brought down a young girl, an 18 years old girl, just because they said they were searching for armed robbers. For people that don't know what is going on, this incident happened in Surulere around Ijeja when some policemen, they were chasing some young men, they said they are searching for armed robbers. And this young girl and her sister saw what was going on, they didn't really understand fully what was happening, they ran into their cop and locked the gate, and one of the policemen just went close to the cop and told them to open the gate, if they don't, he's going to fire at them. Before they knew what was happening, the policeman fired, hitting an 18 years old girl. This girl just went down, just like that. A girl that is seeking for admission and Udumusu, who is the the boss of the police here in Lagos, have the infantry to come out and say the policeman that did it, he is going to face charges. But he never released the name of the policeman, he didn't release the rank of the policeman, he didn't even tell us how the policeman looks like. How are we supposed to believe that this policeman is really in the police custody and he is going to face the consequence of what he did? What kind of trust does the Nigerian police think that they have built with the Nigerian citizens that make them to believe that whatever they say we will believe? And just remember that whenever any young man is arrested, let's say a young man is arrested for courtesy or maybe the young man does something wrong, the first thing the Nigerian police will do is to put the person's face on national TV and on the internet. They'll tell you the name, the age, the local government that this person is from, the job that the person does and the current address of the person. They'll put it on their Twitter, put it everywhere. But now a policeman does something, all of a sudden, his identity has to be hidden. And Odomusu went to visit the parents of the girl that went down and he is telling them that everything is going to be fine, everything is going to be all right, that the policeman is going to face justice. Everyone is telling the parents of the girl that everything is going to be fine. How is it going to be fine? You see, the problem that the Nigerian police is posing right now, it's becoming a huge national security issue. And I'm going to tell you why. Last week, the policeman just brought down a young man who graduated from University of Oyo in River State, and this man was supposed to go for his service by November. The policemen said they were investigating him for armed robbery and courtism. Investigating someone for courtism, then you have to beat the person until the person goes down. You are the person that is supposed to be protecting us. Two weeks ago, a young man went to watch a football match with his fans. After they finished watching the football match, on their way leaving, they saw a policeman that also said he was searching for armed robber. Now, this young man said, ah, please take it easy, don't come and shoot me. And the policeman said, so if I shoot you, what is going to happen? Before the young man knew what was happening, the policeman just fired at him. The young man went down, leaving this lady that was planning to get married, single. I really don't know what is going on in this country, and the Nigerian government have to do something about this quick. And I just gave a few examples. There are a lot of examples. Sometimes I don't even know what to say about it when I say this kind of news. I didn't want to speak about this because I was very angry, but I am speaking about this because I saw the interview of the girl's family on Punch. It's on Punch website for the people that want to say it, but I'm just going to play the interview of her sister so you can just hear how she feels. And yet, the Nigerian police and the Nigerian government, they are not going to do anything about this. For all we know, the policeman might just be at home relaxing, but they will tell us he's in custody, he's going to face justice. This is not what the people that are supposed to be protesting us should be doing. Anyway guys, I will leave you with this interview. And for people that want to watch the full interview, it's on Punch Online. Uh, they put it on all their social medias. But it is very heartbreaking. I'm the elder sister. My name is Ojo Adomalara Olaide. We were in shop that day. So we are parking. Like, up, we are almost done, say. So she saw some guys running. When she saw them and she called and like they start running. Maybe she told me start running. I was running too and I saw some guys running. But I'm still so confused because on our own lane, our mommy shop is even close to our house on this same lane. We're the only person running. The other guys were running through the other lane. So I fell down. 
although she was at my front running too. And she saw me when I fell and she came back. My mom too saw people run too. She was washing plates and she was like, what's going on, what is going on? We could not even respond to her. We just want to rush in first. So she carried me up. We we're pushing the gates. My mommy was locking the gates. We we're there. We we're three really there together. We we're pushing the gates back. So the person was just shouting, open the door. We did not answer. We we're trying to just hook the gates up. Open the door, open the door. We did not answer. The next thing he said was, I will shoot. So Mutra was running inside to call my dad. The next thing the policeman just said was, I will shoot. He did not even say it two times. And he, when he said it, he just did shot immediately. And the girl was just lying inside her own blood and fainted. No. And God gave her the opportunity to just tell us, Mommy, they've shot me in my leg. My mommy just came back because my mommy was already going outside. Who is this person that just shoot inside the compound like this? So immediately she uttered that statement. Mommy, they've shot me in my leg. I just shouted. Everybody came outside. My mommy that was even tracing the policeman that police and because she never knew it was a police but When she started yelling, let's move, let's move, let's move. It, those members that they came with, they even left him alone. So he ran after them. I think they passed through this parkour with their side. He was even run, running after them. So they, he could meet up with those his member. That was the last thing that happened. Then we rushed out to the hospital. When we got to Randall, Randall said they were on strike that they could not even perform. Hey, sorry, Ibobi. They said they were on strike that they could not do anything. So we have to drive back to Havana Hospital. On getting to Havana Hospital, um, a lady came out to check her because I think they said the doctor was very busy upstairs. When he came, when she came downstairs, she brought out the machine to test her, so she could not tell us anything. She went upstairs back to call the doctor. When the doctor came downstairs, I think the doctor just tested her according to what the lady told the doctor upstairs. So he could not even announce it to us that she is dead. So he had to call some people back and tell them this lady is gone. From there, he brought her home back. Everybody was just sad. Monsura is gone, Monsura is gone. If I should talk about Monsura, she was a very kind person, like, she, so respectful. She does not talk anyhow. She's very polite. She's kind. I don't even know what to say about her again. And she was even learning, like, she's into all this tailoring stuff.